Seawater chillers require huge volumes of seawater to absorb heat from the refrigerant inside the condenser. Seawater contains large amounts of microbiological fluids which, when passed through the piping system, form biofouling in the inner surface of the pipeline, which results in the reduction of the flow rate of water without proper chemical treatment. Chlorine is the most commonly used disinfectant for water treatment applications for the prevention of biofouling. The chlorine is available in many conventional forms, but due to various limitations of the conventional methods, the electrochlorinators that work on the principle of electrolysis are preferred across the globe for seawater inlet system treatment. The electrochlorinator is a simple machine which produces on-site sodium hypochlorite solution by using only seawater as the raw material. The hypochlorite generated by this unique technology is very safe because it is of low concentration 0.7 to 0.8 percent, environmentally friendly and economical. The equipment is user-friendly and operates automatically depending on the need. The process involved in the generation of sodium hypochlorite is a simple electrolysis of seawater. The seawater is made to pass through the electrolyzers, which are fitted with dimensionally stable electrodes. When DC power is passed through the electrolyzers, the exothermic chemical reaction takes place and sodium chloride in the seawater gets converted into sodium hypochlorite solution. Yes, it is as simple as that. Having said that, let us go through the components one by one to be familiarized with the system. Here is the seawater inlet pipe. A filter is installed outside this room and a seawater tank that allows only clean seawater to pass through this pipe to protect the equipment. An isolation valve to stop seawater flow when no production is required or during equipment maintenance. Strainer to collect any dirt missed by the inlet filters. A normally open motorized valve which automatically close when the solution reaches the high level in the storage tank. Pressure reducing valve to control the fluctuations in the inlet line and reduce the pressure to the design limit. Pressure indicator to monitor inlet pressure. A thermo switch set at a specific temperature that in case of reaching and or exceeding this value informs the PLC to increase the current to the electrolytic cell. This current increasing partially compensates the reduction of the stock solution concentration due to high sea water temperatures. A manual regulation valve to manually regulate the seawater flow if needed. This is a flow switch, it monitors the water flow rate and if it decreases below the set point, the PLC is informed of the non-compliant parameter and de-energizes the cell giving alarm. Another filter and a check valve are provided upstream the cell. It's an additional filter of 500 micrometers to prevent any damage on the titanium anodes and cathodes in the electrolysis cell. The sea water flow then enters the energized cell where the production of sodium hypochlorite and hydrogen as a byproduct begins. The electrolysis cell is electrically connected to a power cabinet. The electrochemical process provides partial electrolysis of sodium chloride contained in seawater. The anodic and cathodic electrodes are energized through direct current. The NaOCl production is related to the DC current flowing through the cells. The chemical reaction is as follows. Only water and ordinary salt, sodium chloride and ACL are used. NaCl plus H2O plus energy and AOCl plus H2. Liquid sodium hypochlorite and hydrogen gas H2 leaves the cell and travels to a tank that separates the hydrogen gas based on its low density. After the cell another temperature transmitter is installed. In case the temperature of biphasic fluid increases over the set point temperature, a malfunction is announced. To have the best yield of the electrolytic process this flow switch is set to detect a low and high flow. In case it reaches one of the two set points the system is shut down by closing the root motorized valve. The low flow is a symptom of partial blockage of the electrolysis cell or insufficient flow due to blockage of the filter. The high flow of is a symptom of excessive flow at the inlet, 
resulting in lower sodium hypochlorite concentration than necessary. Seawater containing the products of electrolysis which are, essentially, sodium hypochlorite solution and hydrogen gas, is transferred from the electrolyzer to the sodium hypochlorite storage degassing tank. The sodium hypochlorite storage degassing tank is usually GRP gel coated and is equipped with one differential pressure transmitter to control and manage the NaOCl solution production and dosing to the final users by monitoring the sodium hypochlorite levels inside the tank. One float switch that works for safety of dosing pump in case the solution level drops significantly below the low level. This translucent band of the GRP tank allows for visual monitoring of the solution liquid level inside the tank. Sodium hypochlorite solution then travels to the dosing pump whose flow rate is controlled by means of a VFD set to have the design flow rate during dosing phase and a double or triple of that flow during shocking phase. Shock dosing is usually scheduled to run 30 minutes every 6 hours. Shock dosing temporarily raises the chlorine level for a short time. You do this to break down any organic waste, get rid of bacteria and contamination, and boosts the chlorine in the pipeline. On the delivery line of the dosing pump there is the check valve, isolation valve and flow transmitter with two set points to control the correct flow rate during the two process conditions. Continuous in shock dosing. The final product then travels to the seawater pipeline to prevent biofouling in the system. The hydrogen gas disengages from the liquid phase in the upper part of the tank, and it is flushed with forced air to keep H2 concentration below 1% by volume. Dilution air is provided to the tank by using two centrifugal air blowers, one operating and one standby. On this outlet vent line, and for safety purpose, installed one air flow switch to stop the system in case not enough air is flowing. Also, one hydrogen detector is part of the safety system and is installed on the vent line. Set point is 1% by volume. If the detectors measure a higher value of 1% the system switches off.